One of the best, most satisfying, and most reliable ways to navigate in the mountains is by using contours. This, however, can take a little bit of practice. Well, stick around, because today I'm going to be taking a quick look at what's involved with using contours to navigate when you're in the mountains. Hi, my name's Jack, and welcome to the Summit Fit YouTube channel. As well as hints and tips on techniques such as this video today, we'll also be looking at advice on gear, equipment, and general things that you can do when you're out in the mountains to make your time in the great outdoors a little bit more enjoyable. Well, if that sounds like your kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. When you're out on a walk, especially when you're in the mountains, it is possible to navigate by purely using the shape of the land around you. Now you can do this by using what's known as the contour lines on your map. When you're looking at the map, contour lines are the brown lines that weave their way all over the map. Now contour lines run at a constant altitude, so anywhere that single contour line is running remains at the same altitude and you can establish exactly what that altitude is by following the contour line uh, and finding little brown numbers that intersect throughout. Now that little brown number will show you the altitude in meters above sea level. Now the elevation distance between those brown lines varies between five and 10 meters, and you can tell exactly what that difference is on your map by looking in the legend. What a legend. Now on the map, the distance between those brown lines uh, represents the gradient and shape of the land. When you're looking at the contour lines, when they're closely packed together, that represents a much steeper gradient. When they become a sort of amalgamation of brown lines, then that's you know very steep ground, potentially something like a cliff. When they become much further apart, that's where the ground is gonna be much more gentle, much more flatter. Any contours that run in an entire circle on the map it's called a ring contour. Now that suggests a singular prominent point of land. So that may, for instance, be the summit of a mountain. Now, when you're looking at contours, it isn't always easy to tell whether the ground is running uphill or downhill. After all, your map, of course, is flat. There are, however, a few different things you can do to establish which way the ground is running. So for instance, if what you're looking at is an uphill, uh, let's say for instance, a ridge or a spur of a mountain, or what you're looking at is a downhill and you're actually looking at a valley. So there are a few telltale signs, and probably one of the most obvious ones is gonna be looking at uh, things such as water features. Of course, water runs downhill and tends to be located at the bottom of a hill. So if you're looking at a bit of a water feature on your map, if for instance, a thin blue line is becoming a thicker river, there's a good chance that would suggest uh, it's a downhill direction. Another thing you can look at is those little brown numbers we mentioned earlier. So where those brown numbers intersect the contour lines, the number will be upright in the direction of the uphill. As I mentioned earlier, contours are pretty reliable. Fences come and go, streams dry up, or in the winter they become raging torrents, massive rivers. Uh, maybe in some areas, more rivers will form when there's been enough rainfall. So features like this can maybe sometimes throw you off. Things like forests, for instance, might get cut down. Maps get updated periodically, generally once every five years. So there are chances there could be slight discrepancies on the map. However, in our lifetime, in most instances, contours aren't going to change. The mountains aren't going anywhere too fast. This thing is gonna be here in years to come. So the contours are going to be a reliable source to navigate from for a long, long time. So that's just a quick look at what contours are and how to sort of understand them. The best thing you can do now is grab your map, get outside, stand on the side of a mountain, much like I am now, take a look at the scenery around you, compare that uh, with the contours on the map, and really just start to get to grips looking at the map and interpreting them as though they're a sort of a 3D relief image. With a little bit of practice, you'll master it in no time, and your navigating is gonna become a lot easier. If you've enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up below and don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on anything coming up. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.